What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Today, we're going to talk about the new enhanced data model in Power Pages and how we can use it to move solutions off Power Pages sites between environments. So this is still a preview feature. It's not general availability yet. But uh, what we're going to do, we'll take a look at this. We're going to turn on the enhanced data model, and then we'll go through an example of actually deploying a site to a different environment. So uh, I wrote a blog post about this. The, here's the link. I'll put it down in the description, and let's just jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, go over to the Power Platform Admin Center, and here I have a couple of sites. I have a, a trial site here, and I have a, a regular site here, okay? So I have two sites, and I'm going to uh, enable the enhanced data model in both of those. So the way to do it, uh, click into each of the sites, and then you're gonna wanna go to resources and Power Pages sites here, okay? So go ahead and click on that. Then what, we'll, what, what we will see here is it says switch to enhanced data model preview, okay? So you'll wanna click on that, and then it'll ask you uh, to confirm that, and you'll basically say enable. And once we click enable here, and you can see here it talks about uh, improving site performance, reducing site creation time, etc. So, and and we'll uh, uh, basically show how quick it is to create sites with this new data model. So that's one of the features of of, of this. And there is some Microsoft documentation here uh, where you can go ahead and read more about it. Uh, but basically, we scroll down a bit, a little bit. It talks about the use of virtual tables here. And you can see here the uh, the standard data model site. So that's kind of the legacy sites that are out there at the moment. They have the ADX underscore prefix. And with the enhanced data model, we, we now have virtual tables and those are using the MSPP underscore, okay? So that's a little difference there. And for anyone that's provisioned these sites before in the past, any, any Power Apps portal sites or Power Pages sites, you'll know that when you click on that button to create the site, it can take a few minutes, you know. Uh, it's one of those situations where you'll go off and probably uh, get yourself a couple of cups of coffee by the time it's done. And But with this uh, this new setup here, it takes probably, uh, you know, in my experience of just kind of testing, it takes about two or three minutes to get the site set up. So way faster. Um, and then... From, from there, you know, it opens up these capabilities where we can start using solutions for deployments. So let's head back over here to the, uh, to the page here, to the platform admin center, and I'm going to just enable this on our target site as well. So I'm gonna go back into the same place here, and it does take a little bit of time for this initial provisioning to happen to turn this on. Here we go, I'm just gonna enable it here for this one as well, click enable. And um, I'm going to come back in a second when this is finished. Okay, so now that's complete. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, but um, once that gets completed, the next step now is to go and create a site in the uh, interface. So we're going to go and head over here to make.powerpages.microsoft.com. And here we're going to create a new site. So I'm going to click on this. And uh, you can basically choose whatever template you need to here. I'm just gonna go with the starter layout number one. So I'm gonna click choose this template. And then it's gonna get us a web address here and the name, we can change this. I'm just gonna keep it as the defaults. And that looks good. And then once this done is ready, here we go. I'm gonna go and click done. And now this is provisioning the site using the new enhanced data model. Uh, as I mentioned before, this, is, this process is pretty quick. Uh, it's going to probably take about a couple of minutes. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, come back in a couple of minutes. And actually, while this is waiting, I, I want to show you guys something here. If we head back over to this tab here, um, frequently asked questions, how can I update a website from the standard data model to the enhanced data model, right? So, you know, your scenario, you probably would, would have created sites using the standard data model over the last uh, few years. And so... The guidance here on how to get this to the enhanced data model, it says guidance and tooling support to update from the standard data model to enhanced data model will be delivered in a later update, okay? So um, that's something to look out for, all right? Uh, and then this other thing here is interesting about the, uh, talks about the, the new app here. Um, 
can I edit new sites based on the enhanced data model configurations in the portal management app? And the answer is the new websites created using the enhanced data model can be edited using the new power pages management app. Okay. Um, so you know what, let's go ahead and take a look at that app real quick. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back over here and let's just go to environments and I will browse out to this environment and we'll take a look at the apps here. And let's go ahead and just change this app here to uh, the Power Pages Management, right? So uh, previously we had the Portal Management, right? And now we have the Power Pages Management. And when you click into this, we'll see here it's uh, it's basically very similar. So yeah, this looks uh, very very similar, right? But it has a different name, and um, there's I think there's some subtle differences as well going on here. So just wanted to point that out real quick. And let's go back over to our Power Pages site here. So this is our site that's been created now. Um, so yeah, it really didn't take very long. So I'm going to go here and click Edit. And we'll jump into the Maker here, the Designer. And sometimes actually you get this error here, Website Not Found. And what you want to do, you want to click Go Home and just give that a refresh. And most of the time I found just a little refresh makes it uh, actually figure itself out and you can go in and edit the site. So let's try this again, click edit, and we can see the site's opened. Um, and this is kind of just a side thing, but this new uh, edit code thing here is really nice. So if you go and click on this edit code, it takes you to Visual Studio Code for the web, right? So if you click open Visual Studio Code, uh, so it's not opening it on your desktop. This is not the desktop version. Uh, this is the web version. And so they've basically built in this, uh, and you want to click allow here, and then you'll be prompted to, uh, to just uh, sign into your accounts again. But this is um, basically displaying the code uh, for the site. And so, you know, for example, here where it says create an engaging headline, welcome or call to action. Uh, back over here, right, this is, that's kind of this, uh, this text here. And you can obviously change in the designer there, or you could uh, make the changes here in Visual Studio Code, right? Um, so if I add like an exclamation there, for example, and I just hit Control S to save that, you can see in the bottom right, it did a little save. So now if I X out of this and just go back and sync with this now, we'll see that we'll see the change come through here. So it's a pretty nice little feature to be able to edit those uh, pages directly within the interface here. You know, the the other way to do it previously is you could download the uh, website using the, the PAC CLI, and then you would have that locally, and you could open up Visual Studio Code locally and make those changes. And so now it's just another way of, um, of doing it, and, you know, very, very quick, easy way. And I, so I like, I like what they've done there. It's very nice. Um, okay, so we've made a little change here. So now really the next thing is we want to package this up and we want to deploy it to another environment, okay? So in order to do that, I'm going to hit the Home button here. And here we have Solutions, okay? And so I'm going to click on Solutions and we will go and create a new solution that we can that we can use to to do this moving across environments okay so i'm going to call this solution uh demo and select a publisher you can select any publisher you want here and go ahead and click create and this is just like a basic solution that we're creating so here we are in the solution that was created and now all we can do is we can click add existing and go to site and here is our sites, right? So we have one site. I'm going to click uh, to select the site, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Add, okay? And what's, what this is doing, this takes a couple of seconds, but this is basically grabbing everything uh, in our Power Pages site and putting it into this solution, okay? So this is basically going to be ready to export and then import into the target. Okay, so now, now that's been added, so you can see here on the left we have one site, right and then we have uh 271 site components and then we have one site language right so this is our website our power pages and it's now ready to go so i'm going to go back over here and then we're going to select this demo one we'll click export solution and i'm going to click next and i'm going to export this as it is like this and click export and this export uh can you know 
take a little bit of time as exporting solutions do. So, uh, you know, give that a couple of seconds and then we'll be able to download this. Okay, so it says solution uh, exported. So now we just click on the download button and that will download the solution locally. And uh, here we have it. I actually have one already with the same name of demo, but this is brackets one. So I'm gonna use the brackets one uh, when I import it. So next thing we're going to go to this environment uh, to change the environment to the target environment and we will import the solution there. So you can see I have no active sites and no inactive sites in this environment right now. I'm gonna go over to solutions, import solution and select that file and then go ahead and click next and it will give me all the details and I'll click import, okay? So um, let's wait for this to import and then we'll continue. Okay, so that's now imported. And so uh, we're now ready to go back over here to home. And uh, if we click on inactive sites here, we'll see that the site here has come through as inactive. We just need to reactivate it. So let's click on reactivate and it's choosing the same URL here. So you just wanna you know choose something different because it's a different environment, different URL. And then we can go ahead and the, click the done button down here and it's reactivating the site. And we'll see here, the site will be ready to go in a second. Okay, so that's brought us back here and it says getting your site ready. Uh, so we just need to wait a couple of, couple of more minutes here. Okay, so that is now activated and that should be it. Um, the, the site's now been moved across. So uh, if we were to go and preview this, let's take a look here. And it's asking me for permissions here, so I'm just going to click accept. Uh, the the site default to to private mode, not public, which is a nice little feature. So it's prompting me to log in here, and we'll be able to see in a second the site load. And here's our site, and uh, you can see here this was the the subtle change we made with the exclamation. So yeah, now we have the site here. Uh, one thing I do want to end on is how to make these up updates to the sites. And so if we hop back over here and let's go to our uh, source site again, and we'll take a look at, uh, we'll make a little update and then we'll, we'll show how to get that deployed. So I'm gonna go and edit this site again. And let's say we were to add a page to this site, for example. So if I just click on uh, add page here, and then I just want to add a, add a test page, that all looks fine. Nothing super exciting, um, but we have the new page here and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and sync this so that it is updated on the actual site. And then what we'll do is we'll hop back over here, go to solutions again, and I'm gonna go back into our solution. And what you'll wanna do here is uh, select the site and then you can click on these three dots and then go to advanced and then add required compo uh, objects, add required objects. Click on that and it says that it's gonna add the objects, click okay. And so here what it's doing is it's adding in the changes and so it's gonna pick up that, that page that we just created and add that back into the solution here. And then we can deploy this solution up again. So it says uh, it's added the, the components and if I were to go to site components here and uh, Let's X out of this. And if I were to search for the word test here, uh, then there's our, our page there that we added. Okay, so that's it. It's, um, it's, an, it's a nice way they've done this, uh, the ability to move these components across with solutions and we don't have to go through uh, the, the older ways that we were doing it before. They've made it very easy. Uh, solution aware power pages. Hope you guys enjoyed. So that's it guys, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.